And one of the things about the ulama, they say that love, the mahabba for most human beings arises out of three things. The first is the physical love. You see something beautiful and you have a natural, your heart inclines towards it. In Allah had yamiru, yuhib al jamal. And so he put love of beauty in the hearts of human beings. So if you see something beautiful, you incline towards it, your eye delights in it. And if you see a human being that's beautiful, you can fall in love. It happens on just from sight. And so the ulama have maintained the physical description of the Prophet ﷺ because that is a level of mahabba. To actually hear how beautiful he was. And he was the most beautiful human being. He was more beautiful than Yusuf ﷺ. And one of the gifts of this ummah is that we have an exact description of him that it's as if you're looking at him because of this desire to, to keep this description of the Prophet ﷺ so that people could have a physical attraction to him as well as the first stage of love. And then the second type of love comes when you hear about the beautiful qualities. So you have the vahir and then you have the batin. You have jamal of vahiri which is outward beauty and then you have jamal al batini which is inward beauty which is akhlaq. And so they move to the akhlaq of the Prophet ﷺ. And then the next level of love is love that you feel for somebody who's done good to you. Or that you find out somebody made sacrifice for you. Because people, if people do good to you, that human hearts by nature love those who do good to them. So if, if somebody does good to you and then you don't have that love for them, it's because your heart is not in a natural state. It's in a diseased state. And so if you knew what the Prophet ﷺ did for you, you would fall in love with him. If you knew that he, and not just for you, for humanity, his concern wasn't just uh, his sahaba, his family. Most human beings, their concern is limited. Their concern might be their wife or their children, their husband, their family, their extended family. Some people, their concern is the community. They actually extend beyond. And they actually care about if there's poor people in the community, they want to find out and help them because it's about heart. The bigger the heart, the more capacity for love. The smaller the heart, the less capacity for love. And it grows like a seed. Mahabba comes from, habba is seed in Arabic. That's the nature of mahabba. So the bigger it gets, the, the bigger the heart has to get to bear the love. So those people have love for their community. And then there's people extend to the ummah. They extend to the ummah. They actually, their concerns are the concerns of the ummah. They actually think about people in, in other places. Sayyidina Umar said his concern was animals. He said if an animal was being unjustly wronged in, the, in Iraq, I would feel, feel concerned for it. That's his responsibility. Everybody under his demean, the Messenger of Allah وسلم, he felt concerned for all of humanity. And that's why he went to non-Muslims. He wasn't doing da'wah to Muslims. This is wild. Everybody in here is Muslim. I'm talking to Muslims. He was concerned about the people outside who hadn't heard. And that's why he went, كَانِ يَتَعَرَّضُ نَفْسُهُ عَلَى الْقَبَائِلِ He used to go and literally, in, in what most people will consider humiliation, he was a Sharif, he was a Sharif in his home before Islam. He was a Sharif and Nisab. He was from the aristocratic clan of Quraysh. He was going to the Ghifaris, to the, the lowest tribes on the peninsula and talking to them about Islam, humbling himself before them, bearing patiently. Once you rise, he did that for human beings. I mean, this is why he did it, for humanity. And then you begin to feel love. And the more you know that he did for you, the more you should be feeling this love for him. So He says that Hassan ibn Ali, he asked his maternal uncle Hind ibn Abi Hala about the description of the Messenger of Allah. And he said about his uncle that he was very capable of describing. He had given excellent description of the Messenger of Allah. 
And he said, I desired to hear this description from him because I wanted something to hold on to. He says that he was very awe-inspiring when you saw him. He was monumental, grand in nature. His face was like a moon on Laylatul Badr that had a light coming out of it like the moon on Laylatul Badr. He was taller than a, a moderate build, but not exceedingly tall. Because both are, if you see somebody who's very tall, it's strange. Amongst even tall people, it seems strange. If you see somebody short, then also it's noticeable. But he was of a middle stature inclining towards height. Because everything about him was middle. Everything, even his physical description, his color was a middle color. He wasn't pasty white and he wasn't black. He was of inclining toward light skin because of the racism in human beings. I mean, that, that's a re, one of the hikmah of that. It has to do with stupidity in human beings in distinguishing between people because of color. He inclined towards light, but he wasn't pasty white. He was a color like the, what we call the harvest moon. And his hair was neither straight nor curly. It was wavy. It was middle. Everything about him was middle. He didn't speak slow and he didn't speak fast. He speaked in a moderate tone. His words were neither too short nor were they excessive, but they were always just right. When he spoke, people felt as if exactly the right amount of words were used. Everything about him was moderation. He had a full head and his, his hair was wavy. If he parted it, then it parted. It never went past the lobes of his ears if he allowed it to go long. Because sometimes he would cut it for ibadah, like the umrah or the hajj, when he shaved. But when he let it, it went to the lobes of his ears and in some riwayah, just above the shoulder. Wasi al jabin. He had a large forehead, which in physiognomy traditionally was an indication of high quality. And then his eyebrows, they were full and there was a slight space between them. And then he had a vein on his forehead that if he got upset, they could see the vein, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The upper part of his nose was aquiline. So he had a beautiful nose that had a, like a bridging on the upper part. And he had a light that came from that area of his, uh, his face that was clearly discernible. He had a full beard and his eyes were very dark. He had a high, beautiful cheek. He had a, a mouth that was full so that when he spoke, he was, his pronunciation was perfect. Ashnab, Mufallaj. His teeth were beautiful. There was slight space in the teeth. Daqiq al Masruba. He had a light hair on his chest, which was manliness without having a lot of uh, hair. His neck was like a gazelle's neck. He had a beautiful neck and a high neck. And it was like a gazelle's neck. It had like a, a beautiful, like a silvery clarity to it. Mu'tadil al khalq. He was balanced in all of his outward aspects. Badinan. He had a strong build. Mutamasikan. And it was all perfectly formed. Sawa al batni wa sadar. His stomach and his chest were equal. He never had a large stomach. He had no paunch. Even when he was in his. Uh, 60s, his stomach was always flat. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma salli alayhi. Mushih al-Sadri, he was full chested and بعيد ما بين المنكبين, his shoulders were broad and he had a large bone. Also his trachea where it met there, there was space. وَالسُرُّ بِشَعْرٍ يَجْرِكَ الْخَطْ And then he had a light hair also on his stomach. He had no hair over his breast and he was had large 
full hands and full palms and his feet were arched and he was sinewy and strong limbs were strong and he had full calves his feet were very smooth which was also because they were desert people and they walked a lot and people's feet would have a lot of um, roughness to them but his feet were so smooth that water would pour off sallallahu alaihi wasallam and then when he walked he walked softly honan because the quran says wa ibadar rahman alladheena yamshuna 'ala al-ardi honan he walked like that but he was quick paced as if he was walking on an incline sallallahu alaihi wasallam wa idha altafata jami'an when he looked to somebody he didn't just turn like this he moved his entire body sallallahu alaihi wasallam to give full attention to that person nadaruhu ila al-ard atwalu min nadrihi ila as-sama he looked more at the ground than he did uh, up his his glance was generally down because of the power of his glance uh, most of his looking was mulahaza when he looked at people he didn't maintain his stare he would look and then move away so as he looked at people he never fixed his focus on people uh, because uh, of of the effect that that would have on the people he always looked at people and smiled and made them feel joyful he never made people feel depressed he laughed at things that they laughed at he told jokes he liked to yamzahu and aisha said kana mazahan fil bayt he was always joking with us in the house qala an nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam qalu amzahu wa la aqulu illa al haqq i joke but i never tell a lie in my jokes always i speak the truth a man came to me he said ya rasulullah a'inni jamalak let me borrow a camel he said na u'tika walad naqa i'll give you a baby of a she camel He said, "What would that benefit me, a baby of a she?" Because he wanted to ride it. He said, "Doesn't every camel? Isn't that a baby of a she camel?" Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And then another time, a woman Ajuz came up to him and said, "Ya Rasulullah, adkhul al Janna? Am I going to go to Paris?" He said, "La tadkhulna al Janna, Ajuz. Old women don't go to paradise." And she became so upset. And then he laughed and said. Satadkhulina shabba you're going to go in young and youthful and then she was happy he he laughed at things one man came to me said ya rasulullah halaktu he said mada had waqa'tu zawjti fi ramadan i slept with my wife in ramadan and i made an oath that i wouldn't and i hadn't made the takfir because in sharia you have to make the kafara if you do a dhihar or uh, the ila or anything that prohibit a man from wife He said, "What did you do? How ma hamalaka ala dharika? What made you do that?" He said, "Ya Rasulullah, ra'ayt bayad hijlayha fil qamri, fa waqatu alayha." He said, "I saw my wife in the moonlight, and I couldn't help myself." And the bahika Rasulullah, he laughed at the man. He said, "La taf, la taf ala dharika. No, kafir, go and do your t- uh, the expiation." That was his nature. Even when people came mudhnibun the man was in a state of sin but he he was showing his humanity by letting this man feel babu rahmatullah wasi'a anta bashar he was all just letting him know you're a human being you made a mistake that's what he did with people he made them realize that the doors of rahma are open daim al fikra he was always reflecting he had he didn't take rest like other people he was concerned about his ummah he never spoke about uh, anything that was unnecessary he had long periods of silence he used to open his words and close them with a full expression when he spoke he spoke with comprehensive words sallallahu alaihi wasallam he never had excess he was never of, of a loss of words dimithan he had soft and gentle character dimith al akhlaq and he laysa bil jafi he was not harsh he was not harsh the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was not harsh fa bi rahmatin min allah linta lahum is by a mercy of your lord that you were gentle wa law kunta faddan ghalid al qalbi lan faddu min hawlika and if you were harsh hearted they would have fled from around you wal al mahin 
He wasn't gruff or harsh ever. He always elevated the blessing even if it was a minute blessing. He never found fault in anything, even a small amount of food. Any type of food that was given to eat, he didn't find fault in it. Nor did he excessively praise. He never, uh, there was never anything because if he got upset, it never put him in a state of agitation. There was never a time when a right was presented to him except that he would go to fulfill that right. He never got upset for himself. Nor did he ever seek any redress for a wrong done to him. If somebody did a wrong, he didn't seek to redress a wrong done to him. When he, إِذَا أَشَارَ أَشَارَ بِكَفِّهِ He didn't point with his finger, he pointed with the whole hand. Subhanallah. And he would say, Subhanallah. Yaqribu kafu. Subhanallah. If he spoke, he would put his right thumb into his left palm, like that when he was speaking. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Jullu dahkihi at tabassum. Most of his laughing was smiling. He rarely uh, laughed the way most people laugh. He smiled. But when he smiled, his teeth were like hailstones. And then Hassan said, I didn't tell Al Hussein ibn Ali about this. Because they were young. And he said, I didn't tell Hussein. I kept this from him for a long time. He had some knowledge that Hussein didn't have. And then finally I told him about it. And I found that he had actually gotten it before me. And he had asked our father, Ali radiallahu about how the Prophet went in and out of his house and what his majlis was like and what he looked like. And he didn't leave anything that I had uh, out. And then Al Hussein said, I asked my father about the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how he came in. When he went in with permission into a place, he gave three parts. He gave a part for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when he went into the house, he gave a portion for Allah. He gave a portion for his family, and then he gave a portion for his nafs, his own self. So he used to give a portion of that between uh, the people, between him and the people. And he would leave that up to the general people for the elect of the people as well. He never uh, kept anything from them. In his seerah, he always preferred the people of Fadl, uh, but with their permission. So when he would give things, he would always, like if there were older people, he would always give them things. But if there was somebody of virtue, he would take permission from the person of the haq to give it to that person. So even when his own uh, Ibn Abbas عنه, was a young boy, he took permission for him to give uh, to the older people and Ibn Abbas refused because he wanted the barakah. But that was his nature was always to take permission from somebody who had a right to give it to somebody who had the fadl or the virtue. وسلم, he would always occupy people in what benefited them and the ummah. And he would ask about them. And he would ask about news about them. How are they doing? And how so and so? And if can يتفقدوا أصحابه If somebody wasn't there, he would say, Where is so and so? And this is, Wallahi, I mean, these are teachings for people. I mean, now people, we have people disappear. Nobody remember them. They don't ask about them. And this is, this is the Messenger of Allah. And he had an ummah. I mean, this was like a whole ummah of people. And he would ask, and the old woman who used to clean the, the masjid, she used to sweep the masjid out, and one day she died, they buried her. And he came, he said, where's that woman that used to, she was a black woman. Where's the woman who used to sweep the masjid? They said, she died, Ya Rasulullah. He said, why didn't you tell me she died? You know, why didn't you tell me she died to go pray on her? Well, you, she's insignificant. And then he would say, he would say, he would ask about somebody who wasn't there, he'd say, وَأَبْلِغُونِي حَاجَةَ مَنْ لَا يَسْتَطِيعُ إِبْرَاغِي Tell me about people in need who aren't able to come to me to ask me. And he would actually ask people, tell me, if you know anybody in need, 
come and tell me about them so I can help them. And then he told them that those people who help other people who are not able to go and get help, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make firm their feet on the day of judgment. You know, take, looking after people, just taking care of people, this is all just... <laughs> Like just he's just teaching people how to be human beings. I mean that this this is all it is. You know, we're just learning how is it's like human beings don't know how to be human. You know, this is this is the whole point. It's this is all just to teach you just to be human beings. He said they used to come in seeking and they would go out guides. I mean what a beautiful description. They come in Ruwada, and they go out Adilla. I mean, what a description of his majlis. <laughs> that people come in looking for something and they go out showing other people where to find what they were looking for and found it. Allahumma salli alayhi. He said he never spoke except with what was concerned him. He always brought people together and never uh, separated them. Yukrimu karima kulli qawm. He would honor the dignitaries of every people. Wa yuwallihi alayhim. And put him over those people. He guarded himself with people. And he was vigilant because of the makar of people. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam knew human nature. And he knows what people are up to. So can he yahdharuhum. Wa yahtarisu minhum. But never by being rude. He would still always smile. Min ghayri an yatwi an ahadan bishrahu. Yahdar, but he would still be, he would uh, seek out his companions. He would consider what was beautiful, beautiful, and he would yusawibuhu, show people that it was a good thing. And then what was foul, he would show it as foul. And he would make it look yuwahinuhu. He would make it look insignificant to them, not worth doing. Mu'atadil al-amri ghayra mukhtarifin. He was always moderate, and he never departed from that quality. يَغْفُلُوا مَخَافَةَ أَنْ يَغْفَلُوا لَا يَغْفُلُوا مَخَافَةَ أَنْ يَغْفَلُوا أَوْ يَمَلُوا That he would never be weary of a people, like when, when people were speaking, he wouldn't lose his attention out of fear that they would lose their attention and get bored. So he was always present with them. And then, وَلِكُلِّ حَالًا عِنْدُهُ عَتَادٍ He was ready for anything. مُسْتَعِدْ لِكُلْ شَيْءٍ He was always ready for everything. The best people for him were the ones that benefited and were the most sincere. وَعَظَمُهُمْ عِنْدُهُمْ مَنْزِلَةً أَحْسَنَهُمْ مُوَاسَةً وَمُوَازَرَةً The ones that he had the highest estimation for were those who served the most and helped other people and consoled people. Those were the people he looked at, not the people sitting around doing nothing. It was the people serving. Because sometimes those people, everybody looks at them as the low ones. That's why they're doing the khidmah and they're doing the thing. And those were the people to him. That's why the old woman sweeping in the mosque, maybe nobody thought she was very significant, but she was in khidmah. And then, He gave all of the people that sat with him full attention so that each one of them thought that they were the most important person in the majlis. Wallahi, nama bu'atu li utamima makaramat akhlaq. I was sent to perfect noble character. Allahumma sadi alayhi. If somebody got angry in his presence or had some need and was forceful, he would be sabaruhu, he would be patient with him. And he would do that to the point where that man would actually end up being calm or forgetting about what he wanted because he was so patient. If anybody asked him anything, he never refused. And if they didn't get specifically what they wanted, they went out with words of wisdom and consolation from him. He encompassed all of these people with his character. He was like a father to them and they were all the same as far as he was concerned in rights. And only he saw differences in taqwa. 
His majlis was a majlis of clemency, hilm, wahaya, modesty, sabr, trustworthiness, la turfa'u fihi al-aswat, la tu'banu fihi al-huram. Never voices were raised, never were anything that was holy and sacred in any way desacralized. All of them were uh, humbled in his presence. Always he honored the older and he had mercy on the younger. And they would always help those in need. And they had special compassion for strangers and guests. And then he said, I asked about his qualities when, when he sat with people. And he said, he was always smiling. He had gentle character. He had layyan al janib. He was always kind. Uh, and gentle with people. He was not harsh, he was not coarse, he never shouted, uh, he did not use foul language, he did not, f he rarely found fault. If he did, it was to point out something that was harmful. He was not excessively praiseworthy. It doesn't mean he didn't praise. Madah is uh, He didn't do uh, praise that was not warranted. He would tell people ahsanta to encourage them. He would say, Ni'm al-abd fulan, and, and speak uh, highly of people to encourage. But he was not a madah, he didn't flatter. He would, if he didn't like something, then he would just act as if he didn't notice it. No one ever despaired of him. And there were three things that were no part of his nature. Ostentation, excessiveness, and things that didn't concern him. And he left Three things he did not do towards people. لا يذم أحدا He never blamed anybody. He never found fault. He never sought people's faults. He did not speak unless there was some reward that he thought would come from Allah. When he spoke, the people in his gathering lowered their uh, heads as if birds were perched on them. And when he was silent, they spoke. They never argued in his presence. If anyone spoke in, the, in his gathering, they would all listen until that person finished his words and then they would begin the speech with what they were talking about. He would laugh at what they laughed at. Uh, he would wonder at what they wondered at or marveled. يَصْبِرُوا لِلْغَرِيبَ عَلَى الْجَفْوَةِ If somebody who didn't know his gathering was harsh, then he was patient with them. And if he saw anybody, he would tell his companions, help him out if he was in need. Uh, he never sought any praise. And he never cut anybody off when they were speaking until they were finished or the gathering ended and they got up. And this is what Sufyan ibn Waqi' related on this. And that's the character of our Prophet ﷺ. محمد سيد الكونين والثقلين والفريقين من عرب ومين